Yeah, good. Right, I think we're up and running. Yeah, good. How was liquid candy? Um, yeah, it was. Like, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, um, <laughs> well, that, that's it's the thing with this. It's not about um, keeping the podcast and the interview at the end. It's keeping it about simple, the simple side of it. Not, yeah. not trying to get too deep into what's. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. Not talk about liquid candy. How was it? <laughs> yeah, no. It's like I said, that was great. Um, pushed me out of the comfort zone, making that house kind of set. In the end, I did play DMV because I kind of had freedom. Did you? And everyone was like, DMV, DMV. Really? But it was great, like actually playing half and half. All about 40 minutes house, 20 minutes DMV. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that I kind of didn't want to do it. It was out of the comfort zone then, but then it, me, I started to really enjoy mixing house. Okay, good. And then when you hit me up, you know, and now I had some tunes to work with. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're my two favourites. Just DMEs were number one, and that's just number two. But you feel like this song you're going to play more house than drum and bass? Nah, no, uh, well, I've got next gig is, yeah, in two weeks, boat party. Um, 19th of November, so that's 100. 100 people boat party, there's five DJs. I think the first guy's doing house, and then I'm, I'm going to do DMV and the rest of them are. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that, that one will be fun. Cool. We'll be going hard, but it's good now. Like, so I play every week and it frees at mine and that. So having, or if I, I've been asked to play next year at a boat party for the birthdays, friends start to say, oh, would you play my birthday? Yeah. And I like, say so that's the gig where you might play for two or three hours. Um, this is where it's good to not, like, at the start, I was just starting to mix some DMV. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're not so blessed to tell them. So through your journey so far into the music industry is short. And yeah, so it's only, what, a year, and everything's happened super organically, like, mainly through going to Lab 6 was great. Like, I bought my first decks in September last year for DJ 400. Um, and then I just taught myself the basics on YouTube for a couple of months. Yeah. And then um, pretty much went to Lab 6 and then with Blake, shout out to Boston Switch. Shout out boy. to Boston Switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, he, yeah, he, I always felt like I owed him the world because like, he, I don't know, he just instilled like the knowledge in me to, with my mu- mu- setting up my music correctly was a game changer for me. Yeah. Like once I had that down. Which is why I can mix the me with Mars, for example. That's easier. And he just also the confidence he needed to. Um, like, my first ever gig was, um, well, that was thanks to Sammy, Sammy the Sinner, like a girl, she's running the Euphoria. So she hit me up for that. That was my debut. Yeah. At, um, Jeff Rabbit Slims. So, for people who don't know, Euphoria is a festival here in Perth. And Jack Rabbit Slims is also a local, yeah. So it's my local club, which we go to nearly every weekend. So it was pretty cool to have my debut at my favorite club at one of my favorite events. Um, she gave me freedom to play whatever the hell I wanted. I was opening, but she, I played heavy. Did you? She, yeah. Oh. She, she told me to go for it. <laughs> so I did. All right. And no. She was like, all right, maybe next time we'll get you to play later. The DJ behind you just. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, no, she was cool, yeah, she was yeah. great. But it was great, I had like 30 of my mates come, so having everyone at the front. I felt, it felt like, to me, now I look back at the footage and realize, like, you know, see, it wasn't that busy, but I felt like I was playing it, like in my land in that moment. Yeah, good. My first. First, yeah, was, first, that felt like a... Yeah, it was like the best night of my life at that point. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing, uh, that's, that's an amazing thing, thing right? right? To be sort of playing music, some what you love, and then... You get an opportunity to go to the club, but you're always in the park. Yeah, and getting over that fear of, like, I did make a couple of mistakes as well and realised, like, yeah, it wasn't that big deal. Yeah. I think the only person that noticed was my brother at one point. I was queuing <laughs> in the song and I had the volume up. And I was like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and he looked at me and I looked at him and I was like, shh. Oh, it was a build up. It was a build up. Yeah. It was uh, testing the water to see. Yeah, because I was stressing myself out over it, which I'm getting better and better with. Even like with this gig, I was like, oh, you know, it's going on YouTube. Like, if you, what if, you know, you, know, you try and like, be hard on yourself, perfectionist with every, everything. But it's, um, I've realized as just like 
you got to be having fun with it. Yeah. Not so stressed I feel it. like you're doing a good job with that yeah. sort of that, really. I think everything is falling organic. Yeah, we spoke about briefly before, availability is everything. Yeah. You can be available for these gigs, what kicking it off with your way. I think continually, over time, you'll progress into the areas you need to and um, doing what you want. And you're yeah. a drum, drum and bass man and you're from Perth, so it's perfect. Yeah, well, it's like, it's, it's a big thing here in the culture. Um, like I said, yeah, so it's just kind of happens organically, yeah. being in the scene and... Tell me a little bit of uh, how you felt into getting behind the decks. You say you're a music fan, but... Um, what yeah, my, one of my friends, one of my best friends said to me, he's like, fuck, it's funny it took you this long to figure out you want to be a DJ. He was like, but it was more... Actually, maybe two years ago or so, I thought about it. You know, but I'm very like... I was like, oh, it'll just be another thing you you start and not do. Even I think a lot of my mates said, oh, I'll just do it for a few months and get bored. Yeah. Um, and then it was actually also like, you know, Boston Switch, it was at, uh, we were having a party down the road here in Scarborough, and one of my mates, and that was the first time I met him. And I um, was in charge of the music, so I was putting on like playlists and YouTube videos, and then he was there and a few of his other mates that DJ and they, they just asked me how do you DJ because I could see I was coming to the music. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, I don't. And then I told them I'd thought about it. And then they were like, oh, you're kind of like one step off it. Like, you're, you're like, really know your, your sets well. Like, I like, I watched these sets so many times, like, study knew what songs were next and just talking about, I know this song goes with this song. Yeah. And I was like, you should do it. Like, it's fun. And then that stuck with me. And then last summer, I had a few months off work. I was kind of bored, and then I woke up one morning and just said, "No, nah, that's it." And usually walk to um, Maddie's music or still DJ, whatever it is, and literally get yeah, went in, bought the four hundred, and that was it. And Have I, a look back. Yeah, like oh, yeah. I just messed around. <laughs> and I, from the get go, I had heaps of fun. I've had I had like a few plateaus where I got frustrated with like my learnings, but that was when Lab Six. Well, once I learned how to set up my music, then I kind of like went on a nice curve up with my like mixing level. Do you feel yeah, like since you started DJing your drum and bass, not just only your knowledge, your feeling about drum and bass music has, has increased to another level? Now you understand song breakdowns and yeah, that. and especially like just the way I listen. And now, um, obviously, next on my agenda is the production course. Okay. So I'm going back to Lab 6, doing the one one course for Shock 1. Okay. So now, even when I'm listening to music, I might be, like, my brain or ears kind of layering it, like, from watching YouTube tutorials and then starting to learn the basics of production. Now I can hear a song and, like, think of it in layers. Yeah. So I'm about to start the, the second phase of the journey, which I've been, like, Putting it off because I know I'm gonna. It's like it's like the DJ course and the starting, and there's a lot of frustrating moments. And now I'm about to go with the production, which is gonna be even more difficult. And I've been like, you get scared, like, what if I'm not good at it? What if like I get? What if like you know? And Blake, Blake always said to me, he's like, no one's like born a gifted. He's like, ten thousand hour rule. Like just put in, put in the time if you love it. It's you know, it's again, it's just a natural progression. Yeah, I feel like you hit the nail on the head. It's a 10,000 hour rule. Some people are very lucky and they, they can adapt to things very fast, but predominantly to get anywhere in life or with anything, you put the time in, the rewards for at the end of it. So if you keep being consistent over time, you get into lab six, lab six, what an, an unreal school in Bath yeah. that produced some, some great, great artists. Um, the guys are all there themselves, are all. Top notch, and yeah, so just a lot of people. Some people were kind of like, Oh, you don't need to go to school, you know. But I, I learn better in person, and same with the production. Like, I can watch his YouTube videos, but I know when I'm there with, with, with the bloke, especially someone like Chuck One, um, who's done so much more. Absolutely. Well, you'll be mentored into a direction more, and then once, once you get the foundations correct, then you can leap off into your own path, I find. That's the, yeah. same. That's that's the, the same, same with mixing. You, you learn the foundations. Once you have a foundation, 
and you, you bring your own style, which I'm sure you'll be creating your own style with house music and drum and bass. Yeah, well, even like a mixing of houses would be like a bit fast paced and maybe just a traditional house mix, but like bringing elements of, of that, you know. I find that's the beauty of music though, that's... You can do it, you can do it long-winded or short-winded, just put it in there really right along. Yeah. Everyone's going to enjoy. Yeah. Depends on your attention span too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. So, so what's next? next? You said your yeah, your boat party coming up in the next. This episode might not be out in that in that time, but your boat party yeah, coming up and then. Yeah, uh, um, that's well, an uh, official gig on the radar. There was there's there's potential maybe for some later. Well, yeah. as the party season approaches, I'm always through Lab Six too. We often get last minute offers, you know, like you know, playing it. Yeah. different events and signs to say but I, I just keep what I've learned now is to not wait for an event to like just keep working on mixes and just be prepared yeah um same with I was in talks yesterday when I was down at Ocean's one of the local bars and so um there's maybe potential for me to get on there feeling occasionally or match it that would be yeah, that would be another cool, cool place, place to play where it's creative I like playing at places or events where you get Creative freedom. I, I wouldn't say if, if I got asked to play a gig that was not house or anything or nothing like I was, I, you know, I probably wouldn't do it. I'm okay. just going to kind of yeah. stick to, stick stick to, to some points, points, you know. Like, yeah. not, like I've had family members be like, oh, it, you know, my friend's having a wedding or like the 50th, like, do you want to play down? I'm like, well, if I don't. No, yeah, yeah. Mind, there's not have any Franks in March before you or whatever. That's right. I think there's two <laughs> sides of the cusp on that. Sometimes it's... Uh, some is good and then sometimes I think is not sitting out. I mean, I, I've never personally actually wanted to be a club resident DJ like a bit. Ocean's is a bit different because it's, it's, it's a much more chill environment, but I haven't really wanted to just be playing every Saturday at the same club or something. Yeah playing the same thing over and also probably being told what you kind of have to play. Yeah, well, a lot. I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not doing it for money now, it's not my career. Um, I was obviously work full time as well, so I can, yeah, it's not like something, don't, don't want it to be like I'm just doing it because you're trying to make money off it. Yeah. You know, keep that. So, so I, I think, think anyway, like with the production and the hours and the work, like that's the biggest setback is just so you learn to put in the work. But I think if you if the passion stays there, um, and you continue to do it throughout your life then it's again it's just a natural progression. Whether or not, you know, some artists find success really quickly and some don't, but it's not really it's not a race. It's that's it's, right. Yeah, it's not a race. That's what I think. Like even if like we said before, whether or not you find success or make music a full time career even so far, what a year into the journey has brought me like so much cool experiences and um, just memories already. And like just like this, the festival, playing at the club, like even let's if I did nothing more from now, I've already had all these amazing yeah. So it's like connections, just, feelings, yeah. people, and yeah, when you playing at um, like last weekend after we went actually to the shop one tour, and then I stopped into the mates at a house party, and they had a Pretty cool setup. It was like a boiler room, as in I had the decks in the middle of the room, and you know I was pretty drunk, but I played for like an hour <laughs> and a half, and it was like it was great. Like the party was, yeah. just, everyone was so into it, and that was a, that was amazing. That was like one of those moments where I didn't want to get off the decks. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you really like <laughs> back off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of the other boys wanted to play, and you're like, right. but, but like that was the moment you. Actually, like you can see the parties feeding off your energy in the songs. That's like insane. That's like the best natural high. I feel like you're with that feeling. What you're having now, you're on the right progression. So if you're having them feelings in them, places, well, well, I think um, Blake once asked me like, well, why? Would, what makes you want to make music? And I said, well, there's certain songs out there that give me whether it's goosebumps or like adrenaline, and I'm like that feeling that you get from these songs. Um, like, was like, imagine being able to create your own. Um, like, these artists don't, I just don't know how much they might, like, affect people's lives in a good way. Whether you're having a bad day or a good day or whatever, and whether it's pump up for the gym or for the party, and certain songs just, like, make you feel great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel the mental health side of music is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot. I think there's lots of work to be done around that angle within the music industry, though. I think we have. Yeah, we I don't think it's uh, probably the healthiest industry in a lot of ways, like because of late nights, critiquing, like, but yeah, whether people support it or not. Um, I think. I think yeah, with uh, in Perth, there's a, there's a pretty good scene in yeah. the large city community, especially. And all that, so. Yeah. This is probably my sort of answer to my book, mate. I think it's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope we create something outstanding for you. Yeah. I think we will. Like, you'll be, once you see this come out, you'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, like I say, we'll have to do a 2.0 the uh, DMB edition <laughs> already. Echo 2.0 DMB, DMB session. Spec. Man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers